Hello YouTube, welcome back to the NEC Toy Show video. It's been 18 months approximately since the last Toy Show back in February 2020. I know how I missed it. If anybody's not been to the NEC Toy Show, you are really missing out. It's the best toy show in the country, um, probably the best toy show in Europe, I would say. And it's definitely, I would say, one of the best toy shows in the world. Absolutely rammed full of any single toy that you collect, it will be there. Now I did just film this whole video and it was looking good and then my Huawei phone just decided to um, crash halfway through and delete the video. So yeah, never buy a Huawei. Anyway, as you can tell from the pictures and stuff, there was a lot of sellers there. More sellers than ever this time. We were in the car park and we had to park miles away with our fan. One of the annoying things about NEC is they don't let you load by the door, which means um, what looks like to me a load of um, early birds get to park their cars up near the entrance and it blocks all the people with the vans and all the other sellers with their cars with stock really. A bit annoying but apart from that it was a really really good show. Sold loads and loads of Ghostbusters, loads of Jurassic Park, loads of loose He-Man figures. I always try and um, price myself way below eBay. Every figure is basically price below sold listings, not just what we were asking, but actual sold listings. And they flew out the door today. Um, and, and by the end of the day, my store was pretty much dead. I had nothing on it. Um, I was doing kind of like a buy one, get one free on a um, and half price on all figures. Towards the end, the people were just buying them up. But yeah, so thank you to anybody who did bath me. Thank you to anybody who came and said hello. Anybody who said they liked, liked watching the channel. Um, thank you to all the um, other, other YouTubers and other sellers that came and said hello. And everybody I bought off and anybody who bought from me. I had a really good day. Um, I took my partner with me for the first time. And she couldn't believe how good it was. Um, I know a lot of people said it was quite dead for them or it was... There wasn't much sellers, but um, one thing I did notice was there was a lot of people, and this has been commented on quite a lot of the forums, some people said the prices were quite high for a lot of people, and I got that. Things that were usually averaging £25 to £30 on eBay was going, people were asking 60 70 quid for. Now, I don't actually mind paying up a little bit more than eBay for prices. So I think I'd rather give it to a trader there and then so they can get more stock, they can buy some more goodies, rather than give it to eBay. But unfortunately, they weren't budging on prices. A lot of people were not coming down on prices, not wanting to do deals, not wanting to do trades, not nothing. So it just got a bit silly, I think. I think a lot of people got a bit annoyed by it. Um, me, on the other hand, I've had a, had a really good day. I bought some bargains and people that I talked to were really, really nice. So let's have a look at my pickups. So the, the first thing I saw on the stand, um, of this person's stand, was this figure. It's Hook. My, um, I was with my partner at the time and she loves Hook. And she was like, wow, hook figure. And I was like, that's quite cool. And the price was good, six pound. That is not a massive market for hook figures. It's a bit like the Prince of Thieves line. Kind of the toys are a bit, they look a bit odd, some of them. This is Bill Dukes. I can't remember in the film at all. I've seen the film a few times. So I know I know people like Lost Boys, like Rufio and obviously Peter Pan and Hook. Uh, but so many things just look stupid really. Lost Boys, Strike Tank. The tech craft looks quite cool, but a lot of it's kind of like fantasized by the um, toy makers. So that was um, six pound they're asking. And then I saw in the same store, we saw the one thing that I wanted. I have a bit of a want list every time I go and I try and hit certain things. Now I saw this on Paul, the Toy Scavenger's recent YouTube channel um, video. I've been wanting it for ages anyway, but whenever I find it, it's always poor condition or it's in somebody's hand as they're walking out the show, <laughs> but it's this. The Simpsons Bartman. This is made by Mattel. I think it's 1990, 91, that sort of period. It's literally around the same sort of time where it's 1990 on the copyright. This is basically, I think in America, I think the holiday special in 89 and then series one in 1990. And then they released, I think Simpsons was released in late 1990 or 91 in the UK. And we all went mad for it. And I remember my friend having these You've had to just like pick them up at like car boot stores were really cheap, but now they're really hard to find. Um, there was another one for sale. It had a different different logo, sort of slogan, 
wasn't as good, so I thought I'd just go for this one. I would have loved it to say eat my shorts or something like that. Um, but yeah, the card is really nice. It's like it's factory, um, straight out of like a factory box, you know what I mean? A bit wavy-ish, but it, it's great. Now the funny thing is this is £30 and that was £6. So I thought I'd try and do a deal on it, because he had another one on the store for £25, but it was a little bit worse condition. I said to him, would you do 30 for the pair? And he was, no, firm no, and seemed to get quite angry about it. So I said, would you do 35? And he was like, no, definitely not. So he wouldn't even take a pound off. But his wife said, yes, he will. And I think, I don't think he was only mean. I think he just had a day where everybody was trying to haggle with him. And I don't think he was happy with people haggling, um, which is what a lot of people said. They they saw a lot of people that weren't happy for people to haggle with him, which is a bit silly because if you're a dealer, that's the whole point of the deal. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's the, one of the oldest traditions in the world is to haggle the price of things. But I got them for £35 each, which is really good. Bartman is going to go in my collection. Hook, I will probably see if I can build up a little collection of Hook figures, and eventually I'll take it to a toy show. I'm not expecting to make much profit on him. It's just something nice for the store, really. So that's those two. And, and then I went to another store. Had loads of 80s He-Man and Thundercats, but it's all like thrown out across the table. There's so much stuff, you guys couldn't see anything. I kept trying to see what I wanted to buy, but I saw this and it was £25. It's the Mars Attacks um, Martian Brain Disintegrator, like laser gun. Um, it's loose from the box. And, you know, Mars Attacks is something that was, when it came out back in the late 90s, I think it's 1996, I absolutely loved it. Based on the Tops uh, trading card games from the 60s, I believe. The trading cards are super collectible and super expensive to buy. And anything in Mars Attacks is expensive, to be honest. Um, if you ever see Mars Attacks out in the wild and it's cheap, buy it because it's going to be worth money. And this is a bit of a bargain. I think this is probably, if it was in better condition and the box was nicer, you could probably get about £45, £50 for it. But it is a bit ropey and it needs to clean. I'll clean the box up and I'll display it nicely. But I was happy with that. I got that from 25 to 22. I always try and do a little bit of bargaining if I can. But one thing I would say is, is if the dealer's firm on the price, they're firm on the price. Because they, you know, we uh, we dealers have to pay money to be able to resell these things. It's not a case of us getting them for free or cheap. Most dealers don't get their stuff for bargain prices like they say they do. They pay good money for it and they will happy to take a small profit um, with a little bit of room for wriggling for dealing. Um, next up, I found a chap and I got this kind of wrong. I saw this. I thought it was something which is rarer than it was. It's a Spaceship X-11. Now these are kind of old 1960s toys. It's plastic with a little bit of um, with some metal parts, but mainly old school kind of um, thing. It's If it was a bit earlier, if it was 10 years earlier, then it would have been way, way worth a lot more money. Um, my first thought it was it was the um, Thunderbirds 5, because it's based on Thunderbirds 5 from the Jerry Anderson uh, TV series. Um, it makes an awful sound. But it's really nice and it was, I mistakenly thought it was £7.50, but it's £27.50, which is a bit of a bummer. So I was like, oh, but it was, it was, this is actually towards the end of the day, actually. And the guy was like, oh, I also like this. And he was like, oh, I can do a deal on the, on the pair. Now, this is going to be quite hard to actually show because it's quite big, but it's the large remote control canine and he is fully working and lovely condition. He's just missing his eye, um, ear thing on the end. Really, really cool. Really nice. Um, I've got the pair for I think it was like £33 altogether so I was happy with that they both work I then went for a bit of a walk I didn't get much time to go with much actually much looking for toys because it was really packed for me and I was having so many people come to my stand that I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm like arrogant about it but it was just it was just so many people asking questions and trying to do deals and stuff um, I literally every time I walked five minutes away somebody would call me but I went and saw Aaron and Vic from um Empire Toys and I purchased this really cool Evil Knievel figure. Um, it's not worth mega money because of the condition he's in, but if he was worth if it was in mint condition with the right stickers and the back bit which is missing and the spinning device, 
he would be worth a lot more, but he's unfortunately not. I think he's broken there. That's the spinning device bit there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just cool. It's, bit, it's something I would have for spares. My dad sells a lot of um, Evil Knievel, so eventually one day we might need a spare wheel or something. So that was always good to have. Now there was a chap there who was selling basically random stuff. It looked like a house clearance. And I um, I basically went up to him and I saw like a load of load of football cards on his stand. And I said to him, how much do you want? Well, he had football cards and the original series Star Wars cards, which are not really worth that much um, when you think about it, because they were in poor condition. It's only when they're, worth, when they're like really minty condition, they're worth money. But he wanted, for the football cards, which is about 30 of them, he wanted like £150 or something stupid like that. I was like, no, I can't pay that. I'll pay you like £25, because that's kind of what they were worth. Not gonna, I wasn't ripping them off. I was probably paying way more than that actually are worth for them. But he was like, no, he wanted 50 and so I went back and forth, back and forth, but he wasn't budging. But then I noticed he did have comics on his stand and under a store, which he um, was selling off pretty cheap, basically just over a pound a comic. So this is what I picked up, really. Um, the Punisher number one, I believe this is the first Punisher uh, comic. Not his first appearance, but the first full um, run of Punisher. It's number one. A lot of people um, want this comic. It's quite desirable. It goes for about £25 online in good condition. That's probably worth about 15 House of Secrets. Just love that artwork. Really nice horror cover from DC. Man-Thing, number 10. Amazing, cool cover art. Man-Thing, I think it's basically the um, DC version of Swamp Thing. Uh, Submariner, number 19. Submariner's getting sp sprayed on. That's a bit weird. Um, another Submariner number 16. Lovely cover. Let's see that time forgot. Love this old artwork. It's a 15 cents, so it's going to be 70s, I believe. Maybe early 60s. Love late 60s. Uh, Flash. I love the Flash DC. Not a big DC fan, but the Flash I like. There he is with Kid Flash morphing together, which is a bit weird. But yeah, awesome. Micronauts annual number one. I thought it was issue number one of the series, but it's not, it's the annual. Very cool. Micronauts has gone up and up in value. Something to um watch out for. Amazing Spider-Man 332. This is a Venom cover. Not one of the big Venom covers, but always look for Venom covers because they will eventually start going up in price because everybody wants Venom right now. Another Submariner comic, number 10. Now, Submariner came out in the, I think he came out in 1938-39 in some kind of free cinema movie comic that was given out. And then I think he had a full run in 1940 onwards, I think. It lasted until like the 50s, I believe. And then they stopped him and they, and same as Captain America, and they eventually brought him back in the 60s. Um, Spider-Man and Iron Fist team up in Marvel team up. Not of the Dragon. Uh, Avengers. I didn't know what the Avengers were keys. I knew something in the 100 to 199. There was one or two keys, so I thought I'd just pick up as many as I could. I'm just trying to see if I can get lucky. I kind of googled these and there's not much value in these, but with all Marvel stuff from the 60s and 70s, the prices are just going for the roof at the moment. So you're making money back. Um, what was told is the first appearance of Domino. I've got De Deadpool number one. Deadpool number one. Deadpool's first appearance and she appears on the cover but I don't think that's technically her first appearance I think it's a um a kind of cameo or something um another Avengers 166 um Avengers 167 behold the guardians of the galaxy I don't think this is their first appearance but I think it's one of those sort of first cover appearances sort of thing it's definitely an early one um man thing number 11 as always if you're collecting comics the rule of thumb is if it's an early issue in the, in the run, like one, two, say 50, then the chances are it might have be a key. Because like Spider-Man, for example, the first 50 issues of Spider-Man are practically all keys. As in they have first appearance of characters, first um, appearance of events and stuff. Um, the Avengers, number 172, The Return of Hawkeye, Holocaust in New York Harbor. A morbid um, title. Um, another one with Hawkeye on. Hawkeye's going to be obviously quite popular if it's soon with a new TV series coming out. Who is the super villain? Surprise super villain Hawkeye battles a lion. 
Submariner one, sorry, Submariner seventeen. He's on his back. Submariner eighteen, and he's on his back again. I think the problem with Submariner because he's on the water, it's really hard to basically have him like dangling from buildings and stuff. Um, another Domino first appearance, I believe. New Mutants number 87. I think this is the first cable, but it's not the original print, which is not really worth that much. Hands of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, really cool, number 62. And then finally, the Eternals number 8. As I said, I think some of these internal issues might become keys in the future. That's number six. They came to event a Holocaust. Holocaust is used quite a lot in comic books. It might be due to like the Stanley's Jewish connection sort of thing. Um, number four. See that that was it. I mean, I paid forty pounds for that lot. I think I can probably get my money back in like three or four comics easily. Now, if anybody remembers um, like 90s and 80s McDonald's and Burger King toys, they know that the prices of those sort of toys are pretty much pennies on eBay and at toy shows and stuff. McDonald's stuff, if you ever get boxes of it, it's not worth much. So I would never really try and invest in it or buy it up. But there are a few things which are worth money and are gone up in price. And these are to add to my collection. The Burger King Universal Monster characters. So this is the creature from the Black Lagoon. He is really cool. I think when you press his chest it's supposed to light up but most of them have gone. We have Frankenstein's monster on like a bed. Um, yeah he's really nice as well. He's got a bit of a go in the dark sort of look to him. I'm not sure how many of these figures they did. I know that I've got Dracula and I think that might be it. I'll be surprised if they didn't do Mummy as well. Um, and this one is the, if it comes out, Wolfman. It gets a bit stuck, unfortunately, but his door is supposed to open up. And he comes out. Like that. And you can take him off and play with him as well. Yeah, very cool figures. They remind me of the Remco figures from 1980. For what that was, for, for a toy, you know, free with a, a Big Mac meal or kids meal, to me that's a very good bargain. I paid £12 for those three. The guy wanted 15 and I just sagged them down a little bit. Yeah, those are starting to come a bit collectible. People are wanting them and they're um, going to be kind of gone in the next couple of years because everybody's buying them at the moment. Uh, then I picked up this, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Now, if you don't know what this series is, it's basically Elvis Presley and the 50s meet dinosaurs. Um, dinosaurs were massive back in the early 90s and so was that kind of 50s revival. And so they did these kind of figures which, like Jurassic Park and other figures of the era, like the Hook figure to be honest, they're hyper, all buffed up, and they all come with witty, over-the-top weapons that nobody would ever use in real life. The dinosaurs, I believe, are actual moulds or leftovers like Hermes and, and the Triceratops from the Dino Riders range. I wouldn't be surprised if this was Dino Riders as well. They basically just repackaged them to make money. This is made by Tycho. It was kind of cool for about a six month period and it kind of died out but these are coming more collectible now as people start to realize what they are. They, most people don't remember them but um, I had them in, um, I had them because my nanny used to buy them from pound shops for me when I was a kid. Now on to some graded pieces. There was a lot of graded stuff there and um, I was surprised because I thought I, I was led to believe a lot of people People keep telling me that Grady stuff is going to be dying out and nobody wants Grady stuff anymore. But that's clearly not true because there was loads for sale, loads of new stuff being graded. Usually with Grady stuff is all Star Wars. So when I saw this, King Hiss, He-Man, um, Master of the Universe figure, I was just like, wow, I, I have a few of these in my, in my collection, not this figure. And to have all three pieces displayed like this is quite a big thing. I think it costs quite a bit to get it done. It's UKG. It's graded 80, um, annoyingly, I wish it was at 85, but these things, he might have really hard to grade high because the bit between their legs and their torso gets like, gets all brown and mouldy and stuff. But yeah, this was a cheap price. The case is cracked and that's why they give me a bit of a deal on it. 
Um, but I, I, I do collect graded He-Man figures at the moment. I don't really collect loose. I would like to collect loose things, but with loose stuff, I want to display it in massive collections on you know, display cabinets with all set up. But that just takes up so much room, which I did not, I did not have. Room is a premium at the moment. And on the subject of grading from the same guy, I can't believe I bought these, but I just saw them. I was like, do you know what? I've never seen them graded before. Um, loose and I, I don't know why you would grade them loose but these figures were my, my favorite from when I was a kid now I did not grow up on vintage Star Wars I grew up on Power of the Force 2 so when I saw a graded side trooper I was like wow I never thought anybody would grade that because I thought they were quite cheap but side troopers actually are quite expensive on card um, loose they're pretty easy, easy to come by I think it's because um, these are considered like the figures that they should have made for the um, last 17 sort of toy line, but they never got around to doing. And uh, I don't know why anybody would have graded this because there are quite a lot of them out there on the market. But then again, nowadays, a lot of these things are being bought up and all that mass, a lot of toys from the 90s, Star Wars lots. You don't see them as much anymore. I mean, at the toy show, the NEC show, I think I didn't, I didn't really see any carded um, Power of the Force 2 stuff, apart from, from some stuff that was signed. Um, so where is it all gone? I think the belief is that there, there was too much of it made and it won't sell. But I don't necessarily think that's uh, true because I think eventually we're going to start to run out of nice, ca nice carded figures and nice loose figures. People are going to play with them. They're always at the bar bottom of bargain buckets, aren't they, of, um, of toys. So it's kind of like they just get sm smashed around, not appreciated. So this is Princess Leia. This is given a graded um, a 90, which is super high. But, but I think this is being taken off card because it would usually say U90 as an uncirculated 90 if it was taken from card. But because it's modern, it doesn't really need to, they don't really bother with it, I don't think. Yeah, Leia in her slave outfit. Um, this is something that Disney will never reproduce, in my opinion. I don't think we're ever going to see a slave Leia ever again. I think it's um, not something that parents would really want their children to play with nowadays. But I had one, and I loved it. <laughs> Sad there wasn't a Jabba in the 90s to come out with for it. There was a Jabba made for the, um, the 1997 re-release, and it was an awkward shape where the Jabba would not go like he does in Return of the Jedi. So it was awful, and I really wanted a vintage jab as a kid, but I just couldn't find one cheap enough. I think they were like £15 at the time, and that was just too much for me. But yeah, cool figure. Very, very interesting in, like, toy history, this figure. And she's called Slave Leia. I imagine if it was ever released again, she would be called Jabba Palace Leia or something. But that those two were a bargain, so I was happy to pick those up. Now, second to last. Um, yeah. Terminator 2 figure. This is um, Judgment Day figure. I remember seeing this as a kid. My friend had one and I was just blown away and I really wanted one. I went to a car boot sale and found one and I loved it as a kid. It's a bit, you know, of the 90s where nothing looks like it does from the film. But this is kind of close enough. Arnie um, looks like he does at the end of the film when he's getting beaten up by the, um, the liquid man, as I call him comes with his um, attachable arm and he gets like a robotic claw arm. Um, you would never, that never happens in the film, so it's a bit stupid really, but it's nice, nice gimmick to have a bit of an extra thing. I'm not going down the route of collecting the whole line of these, I just wanted one or two of these for my collection really, and this is my favourite one. Find this um, on card, it's near impossible. About five years ago there was loads of them. I had one, loved it, had it on a card, displayed it, and then I eventually sold it when money was a bit tight. Wish I didn't know, and I sold it for like £20. Now people are asking like 150 for it on card, which is silly. It's worth about 35 40 what you would pay for it really. A nice card, maybe 50 on a nice card, that's what I'd pay for it. But I'll find one one day. Right, I'm going to clear this away and I'm going to show you my number one pickup of the day, and probably my number one pickup. Ever. Now this is a toy line I've always, always wanted to collect. When I kind of knew it was a thing, um, I was just like, wow, I need to find this. 
The problem is this toy line is super hard to find in the UK. You very rarely see it at toy shows. You won't see it at any local toy shows. You mainly see it at NEC or Sandown or some of the bigger ones. You don't see them. So when I saw this up on the shelf on, on somebody literally opposite my stall, I didn't want to ask because I was thinking it's going to be worth a lot of money. They have asked hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But somebody came to my store and basically was buying up this same toy line off me that I had some modern versions of and they wanted and they were saying oh that one over there it's you know it's cheap it's just it's just it's just missing a few pieces and I was like oh, really and they looked over at it and they walked towards it and then they walked off again and I thought do you know what I'm gonna go and ask and when I went and asked and they said it was 85 they said would you do 75 on it they said yes I couldn't believe my luck and it is the vintage Indiana Jones Desert Convoy truck. So I paid, I believe, £75 for it. Yeah, it's amazing. It's something that I've always wanted. I've always wanted Indiana Jones. I've got the Cairo Swordsman on card, um, and I've got a the 12-inch doll, and I've got a puzzle, and that's it when it comes to vintage Indiana Jones. I, it's my favourite um, trilogy of films. I don't really think of the fourth film as a amazingly good film, but I don't mind it, but... The first three to me are just amazing. Um, finding any Indiana Jones is just incredible. So if anybody out there has any Indiana Jones pieces for sale, even if it's little bits that come loose or you know parts of it, please please message me. Um, so anyway, yes, but this box it's a bit ropey as you can tell. The ends are crushed. It's got loads of tape all over it where somebody's tried to like hold it all together. I'm hoping the pieces of the boxes are in there, and hopefully I can reconstruct that. Annoyingly, on this side, which is not that bad. It's got a big sticker right over where Indiana Jones is. Now I don't know if I want to bother getting it off or not. Sometimes I like having those sort of shipping labels on there because I think it tells the story of the toy. But at the same time I think this side would be the better side. So I could potentially try and steam that off but I'm not too happy about doing that. Anyway let's look at the truck. So as I was told, I was told straight away when I bought it that the door was missing from the, um, from the passenger side but if I was to have Indy on it I'd have it displayed it like this anyway so it wouldn't bother me too much um, yeah very cool toy I mean it's it, obviously it's just a truck so it's not the you know the most craziest thing in the world but it has the the side things here and I think this comes off has a very kind of um what's it called um G.I. Joe sort of feel to it and if that one comes off don't push it too hard but have a look there you go no whips or anything left in there unfortunately but yeah very very cool um i'm so glad to have it especially because it has a tow tow cable um i imagine that gets missed quite a lot because i imagine people pull it off and break it and the doors are really cool they open up and kind of slam shut as well which is quite nice so yeah i would love i would love to um be able to get that missing door it's i think it would be relatively hard to find i don't think i'll ever come across it i'll put it out on some groups and see if anybody's got one but i think it's going to be a needle in a haystack to try and find that door in all fairness any indiana jones stuff i just cannot find i bid on i've not got indy in my collection himself i bid on him so many times on ebay i won a lot for like 200 pound paid for it and the guy never posted it and weeks later i finally got my money back and they basically just put it back on eBay again at three or four times its price. Knowing, as I never would do that to anybody, I think if it sells, it sells. But to get something like this in my collection, it's just so cool. I, I just, just a, even a battered box to me is just amazing. I'm eventually going to make this room I'm currently in, currently in filming now into my toy display room because it, currently it's my storage unit. I have another storage unit as well. But um, yeah, it's getting really, it's, this room's getting really filled up with absolute rubbish. I need to, need to keep selling some more stuff, so I will be at more toy shows. But this will be staying in my collection. I don't I don't care what people say. I'm not going to resell it. I want I like this. I'm never going to find another one. I doubt I'll ever find another one. Even the um, the modern version of this is really cool. I mean, it's definitely worth a pickup. But yeah, there's so cool. Look at Indy on his on the front, like in the film. I'm so annoyed that door is missing. Can anybody, anybody definitely confirm it came with a side door? I'm pretty sure it would have. 
here. Awesome, very cool. And I'm going to try my best to restore this box the best I can. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate every one of you who watches my videos and um, you know, it really helps build the channel. So if anyone wants to subscribe as well, that'd be amazing. I'm hoping to try and get some more cameras and more lighting and a better setup so I can show you some more stuff. And I'd like to eventually buy another glass cabinet so I can have my collection all in this room and then I'll do an amazing room tour. I've got some cool stuff and cool different toy lines to show off. Yeah, so if anybody has that spare door, I will happily pay you 25, 30 pounds for it easily. Um, if anybody else has any um, other parts like the inner cardboard for this or any other Indiana Jones stuff, please contact me. Um, I'm always happy to buy toys anyway. So if anybody has any toys to, for sale, especially stuff from like the 60s, 70s and 80s, I'm happy to buy. If it's at the right price. As always, thank you so much for watching. I had such a great uh, time at the NEC. It was so good to see everybody. Really, really good. So there's another one again in December, but next, I think it's the 17th of October, it's the Stafford Show, Staffordshire Fairground Show. That's going to be great. It was really good last time. Um, usually, I've, I've been told previous years it's been a bit, you know, good and bad. But this last year at the time, it was really good. So if you're into this sort of toys, you're going to get a, you're going to get a good lot of toys at the um, Staffordshire Show. I'll be selling there, so you're more welcome to come and say hello. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And happy toy hunting.